Blessings, Love Gospel Assembly. Welcome to our Friday night service. Always such a joy to be with you and to share in the worship of the Lord and declare his greatness, his goodness, the glory of his name and the hope of the gospel that sets men free. We pray tonight as we worship and as the word of God comes forth that your faith would arise and whatever impossible, unchangeable circumstances you may be facing, um, know that there is a God in heaven that has all power and is watching over you with um, great uh, love and compassion. And he can reverse irreversible conditions. Um, he even raises the dead. So believe him for your dead hopes and your dead dreams and things that seem that the season has passed with God. That's always not so. It's always now with God. And so let's hear what God is saying now and see what he's doing now. In Jesus' name. They say this mountain can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through We've heard the tide will never They haven't seen what you can do There's power in your name So much power in your name Move the unmovable Break the unbreakable God we believe God we believe for it From the impossible We'll see a miracle, God we believe, God we believe for him. Trust 
in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way where there seemed to be no end. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for from the impossible we'll see a miracle god we believe god we believe move the immovable break the unbreakable god we believe god we believe for it from the impossible we see a miracle god we believe god we believe you said believe you said it is done you said we believe you said it is done you said we believe you said it is done you said we believe God of the resurrection, you said we believe. You said it is done. Be unto me as you have said, Lord. I believe, and it is done. Move the immovable, break the From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. 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 just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace and there is freedom I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I, I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus 
over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold Shine through the darkness, burn like a fire. We shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus from the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. We shout, Jesus from the mountain, Jesus from the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. We shout, Jesus from the mountain, Jesus from the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold through the shadows burn like a fire your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a Here I am, here I stand, Lord, my life is in your hands, Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me, I give myself away. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my hand. My life as a living sacrifice, and all my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in 
your hands I give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. My life is not my own. To you I belong I give myself I give myself away My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself away My life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself away my life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself away. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I want to live for you. Alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way. I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Wanna live for you alone, every breath that I take, moment I'm away. you my heart I give you my soul I give you my heart I give you my soul I give you my heart I give you my soul I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I give myself away, I give myself away so you can use me, I give myself away, I give myself away so you can use me. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it has always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it has always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus should center and everything revolves around you. Jesus, you 
at the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end. It will always be, it has always been you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. I say those things to you about the gulf and those things and I know it frightens you you know what I mean but sometimes we need to be frightened there are things that we need to be get our attention because we're sleepwalking that's why the stories that are in the Bible are there they were sleepwalking Noah preached for 120 years am I right 120 years a man was doing something that should have got somebody's attention. And he got nobody's attention. And people say, oh, that's just a story. Okay. Maybe it is or maybe it isn't. I'm not trying to find out. What about you? Did you hear? What about you? It's not what happens. It, it's what has happened. If I'm in Christ Jesus, that's where I want to be. Everything after that, amen, is, you know, a commentary. If I'm in him, amen, then I will be safe because he has promised never to leave me or forsake me. But if I'm in love with the world, if I'm in love with the corrupt system of the world, then I will have all kind of problems. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify and magnify your name. We exalt you today. Liberation is a soul thing. Lord, our bodies can be free, but if our souls, if our spirits, oh God, are in captivity, then we're not free. We're just acting like we're free. Lord, we want to be free, totally free, free in you to live, to breathe, and to have our being. You are, oh God, the liberator of our soul. And so we thank you today. 
We thank you for the 4th of July. We thank you for liberation. We thank you, oh God, that somebody fought that men can, women can be free. We thank you for that, Lord. We don't belittle it, oh God. But we know that there's a greater freedom. And that's the freedom that we pursue. That's the freedom that we're standing in. We give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. Now, Lord, your word is anointed. Now, anointed to my heart, my mind, and my soul. I need a word from God. Hallelujah. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. If that's what you need a word from God, why don't you touch two or three people and tell them, I need a word from the Lord. You may be seated. We were preaching on Friday about the face of Jesus. And we talked about uh, how both Jesus, Moses and Jesus were both transfigured. And how Moses came down from the mountain with his face aglow. Amen. And how Jesus, amen, was on the mountain and his whole continents was a glow. And we talked about how the people, when Moses came down, ran from Moses, but they ran to Jesus because there was something in his face. And so that's just a little commercial. You can get the DVD, the CD, get me in living color. You can watch me anytime you want to can bring your friends over. They can watch me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So, and, and I was talking about, amen, uh, some real heavy duty stuff in that sermon. And believe it or not, the spirit of the Lord really fell Friday night and God just convicted our hearts and our soul. See, people say, well, preach me happy. No, I want to preach you saved. I'm, I'm going to talk over here. People want to pre preach happy, but no, preach me saved, preacher. Preach to me so I can stay saved in a sin-ridden world. Preach me so I don't lose my footing. Preach me, preacher, till the anchor is strong. talked about the house of prayer. We built the house of prayer for our guests. We built a 12-room house inside of our church as God directed us. And uh, doing our holy consecration, we went. And uh, I moved it from the reception hall and built it. We had a dumpster. We had about 20 guys here. We cleaned out the chapel and put it up there. A lot of work, a lot of effort. And um, I was talking to Tasha, trying to keep a record. Well, who's coming? And Tasha said, well, Bishop, hasn't been a lot of people having come. See, that speaks about our level of commitment. It speaks about us going on in Jesus. We think because we went through the consecration, amen, that that's going to carry us through the July and August. And so it's not. It's an ongoing relationship. Hallelujah. I need you. And so, as I prayed, but I felt God said, just leave it, son, don't touch it. And I just waited. And then I asked, I said, Tasha, how many people went? She said, well, Bishop, uh, one day, I think it was Thursday, Wednesday. She said, Bishop, 15 people came and went through the house of prayer. I don't think they was church people. People are finding out about it out there. And because they're hungry for God. They came in and 15 people went through and nine people gave their heart to the Lord. Oh, God can do it without you. He'd rather do it with you. He doesn't want to put his anointing in a, a, a building. He wants to put his anointing in you. That your face would shine to the extent that people would say, mm, something about you. I can tell you've been with the Lord. Hallelujah. That should be our goal. Amen. Let me just take this few minutes. This is my preaching time. This is not my sermon. This is still, I'm on Friday. But, but here's what I want you to know. Yes, it's true. You are saved. You're delivered. Amen. It's true that heaven shall be your home. But I want to let you know there are only two kinds of people here on earth. 
those that are under, amen, grace and those that are under the law. And everybody that you love that's not under grace is under law. Law didn't go nowhere. Did you hear me? Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. But God, but that means my loved ones will die. That means that people will, yeah, but that's why I saved you. Hallelujah. That's why he saved you. Because he believed that you would pray and intercede for everybody connected to you. That they might be saved. Hallelujah. That they might be saved. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 18. In today's message is the heart of Jesus. We preached about the face of Jesus. I want to speak about the heart of Jesus. And these are sermons of contrast for the homileticians. These are sermons that these are sermons that contrast two things. And it allows you to choose. How many know that God says, I put before you life and death, but choose life. Amen. I'm going to raise you up in the church. I'm going to preach to you in your formative years. I'm going to give you enough truth so that you understand it. So that when you go out into the world and you have to make choices, amen, you will at least have some semblance of understanding the choices that you're making. And what they don't tell you, but I will tell you because I'm, I'm the preacher, I got to tell you the truth, is a, tied to every choice is a consequence. Tied to every choice is a consequence. The consequence is already tied to the choice before you make it. Making the wrong choice and trying to undo the consequences will not work. That's not going to work. Are you with me? Praise God. Just before we get into the message, let's give a great hand, amen, to this great uh, uh, group of ministers we have, Pastor Lillian Guterres. We don't have her all the time, so we thank God for you, Lily. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. Elder Rosa Powell Brown, a woman of God. She likes to be like and sit in the back. She could be sitting anywhere near you, anywhere in this temple. You'll never know it's her. Amen. She would like to sit around in different spots and just uh, minister to the Lord. Minister Jeffrey Williams, hallelujah. He's a guy that's doing a great work in the love kitchen, hard ministry, amen. But when God is preparing you for big things, he puts you in hard places. Because he wants you to send down the roots deep, amen, amen. A tree can grow no higher than the roots that it sends down, amen. And the Honorable Pastor David Martin, the chief psalmist of this house, Let me just quickly say this. Many times God puts leaders in front of us. Well, let me, yeah, leads in front of us. And part of our job as leaders is to be role models. And God wants us to live our lives out in front of the people so the people can see faithfulness. The people can see loyalty. The people can see commitment. The people can see holiness. The people can see righteousness. So bad things will happen to you so the people can see righteousness. You should see your face. Well, I'm going to go to something good now. I want to honor my girl, my baby, my woman, my girlfriend, Lady Dorothy. I love you. I honor you today. So glad you're here. Rachel and my rest of my family, my in-laws. I'm glad they're in-laws and they're not outlaws. Vanessa and her crew. Praise God. We thank God for you. Praise God. First Kings chapter 18. 
We're going to go to verse 20. We're going to read a lot of scripture here today, but it's important. If you know anything about this portion of scripture, God has called Elijah to pray, and Elijah has prayed, and there's been no rain in Israel for three years. And there's a famine in the land. I know you think I'm far-fetched when I say the things I do, but I'm right in the scripture. When you mess with God, when you do the things he doesn't like, he shows you, I don't like that. He's not trying to kill you the same way when mama beat you. you know, I mean, we thought mama was trying to kill us. <laughs> but since we alive, we figured, you know, she was just trying to get our attention. Darnell's going like this. I know you can't do nothing, Donald. Just wink. <laughs> He's like this. <laughs> and uh, God will get your attention. because Why? Because he loves you. He's not doing it because he hates us, because he loves us. And he's saying, what you're doing is wrong. You're going in the wrong direction. And he brings things. And the, and the more we go in the direction, the stronger he pushes back. To push us back. To say, stop. Not because he hates us. Some people will not be stopped. And so now Israel has been in trouble. The crops have failed. They're in deep trouble. And uh, the king, uh, 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 Jezebel, and her husband, Ahab, are searching for Elijah all over. They want to kill him. They want to take the, the prophet out. And so one of the people that the king goes to is a man named Obadiah. And uh, Obad the king tells Obadiah, you go and look for Elijah this way, I'll go that way. And uh, here in this portion of scripture, God tells Elijah, get up because I want you to speak to Ahab. I want to bring the famine to an end. God wants to bring the famine to an end. But Ahab doesn't want to change. So he sends the prophet to him. And uh, he meets Obadiah, and he tells Obadiah, I want you to go back to Ahab and tell King Ahab that I want to meet with him today. And Obadiah says, yeah, excuse me, but listen, man, we've been searching for you everywhere. We could never find you. If I go back to tell him that you're here, what if the Spirit of God moves you somewhere else? He said, Ahab will kill me. And Elijah tells him, don't worry, man. I give you my word. <clears throat> Bring him here. I will meet with him. And so here in 20, it says, so Ahab sent word throughout all of Israel. In fact, when Elijah meets with him, um, he tells him, meet with me on Mount Carmel tomorrow and bring all your prophets and all your people. Amen. And we're going to meet and we're going to, we're going to talk. And so here in 20, it says, So Ahab went and sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long? How long? In fact, I had the great privilege of standing on Mount Carmel and preaching this portion of scripture. And it's actually your voice could carry down the mountainside. Not all the way up on the mountain, but there's a place where they believe this happened. And he says to the people, How long? And that's kind of where I feel America is today. Not America the unsaved, America the church. God says, how long will you waver between Baal and Jehovah? How long will you waver between the things of the world and the things of your God? And here he challenges them. He says, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow Baal. But the people said nothing. You know, just like it is right now, you know. People say the Bible's not relevant, but you notice that people ain't, they, they ain't saying nothing. People didn't say nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get you two bulls for us. 
Let them choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but do not set fire to it. And I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you can call on the name of your God, little g, and I will call on the name of the Lord God Almighty. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose you one of the bulls and prepare it first. Since there are so many of you, call on the name of your God, little g, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal. They called from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, 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 Baal. Oh, Baal, answer us. They shouted, but there was no, there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout a little bit louder. He said, surely, he is a God, little g. Perhaps he's in deep thought or busy traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and with spears, as was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response, no one answered, no one seemed to pay attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here near to me. And they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes, the descendants of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two seats of seed. He arranged the wood and cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. He said, now that you've done it, do it again. Somebody said, do it again. And they did it again. And then he says, do it the third time. He ordered and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of the evening sacrifice, the prophet Elijah steps forward and he prayed, O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that you are God and that I am your servant and I have done all these things at your command answer me O oh great Lord answer me so that these people will know that you O oh Lord are God and that you are turning their hearts back to him and the Bible says that then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice the wood the stones and the soil and it licked up the water in the trenches and everything evaporated. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, Jehovah, he is God. He is God Almighty. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. And so here now, there's a showdown. And I believe there's going to come a showdown between God and and the bells of our world. Oh, hallelujah. And so here now, Elijah, why was, the, why was this happening? Because the altars of the Lord were broken down and left abandoned. The people were too busy, amen, to build the altars of the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, I hope he's not talking to you. But the way your face looking, right, he might be. <laughs> and 
And so he builds it back to speak of the spiritual unity for God's people. Elijah had given the prophets of Baal every advantage. Did you notice that? You go first. You pick the bull. You do whatever you want to do. Do it for as long as you want to do it. So now you would think he would give himself some advantages, but instead he chooses to give himself some handicaps. Oh, when you know who God is, I don't care how much they scream and jump. I don't care what they do. When you know who God is, when you know that there's only one God, he said, I'm God all by myself and there ain't nobody else up here. When you know that in your soul, go ahead and do your thing. Well, they shouldn't be praying in the name to this God and praying to that. I don't care who they pray to. Go ahead and knock yourself out because there's only one true God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, neighbor, this is an example of the power of a made-up mind. Oh, hallelujah. Once your mind is made up, Bishop, why did he do it this way? Because Elijah, like many of us, was tired. That's right. Elijah was sick and tired of being sick and tired. He had had enough. Can I get a witness? He said, God, he said, God is time now. I'm tired of everybody talking about dragging your name down, saying how great they are. It's time, God, for a showdown. He said, Jezebel was on a murderous rampage. She had killed hundreds of the Lord's prophets. And others were hiding in caves for fear of their very lives. And this is in the story of Obadiah talks about how he hid 50 in two caves, 100 people. So Elijah had come to the place where he was saying to Ahab and Jezebel, to the 450 false prophets, to the 400 wannabe prophets, they mean that eat at Jezebel's table, to the people who could not seem to make up their minds after all that God had already done. Elijah was saying, this is it. And after the day, everybody will know who is God. So Elijah puts the wood on the altar, places the sacrifice on the wood, has a trench dug around the altar, and drenches it three times in water. The Bible says that at the time of the evening sacrifice, somebody say at the appointed time, See, they were just doing all their rituals and all their religious things, but Elijah waited because he knew what time it was. Oh, I wish somebody in here understood what I was saying. Elijah said, y'all can go and do anything. He said, but when it gets to about 3 o'clock at the appointed time, when it gets to 3 o'clock, when they're getting ready to have church, uh, uh, that's the time I'm going to stand up because God has given us an appointed time to meet with him. The prophets at Baal had been having it their way. If they started from nine to three, they had it their way for six hours. Now, how many know that six is the number of man? Amen. So they did as much as man can do. But there's some things man can't do. Amen. There's going to be some things that are going to stop man. There's going to be some things that man's going to have to cry out sooner or later and say, come on, God, because we need you, because we've done everything that we can do, and we can't find the answer. There's going to be some things that will stop man. They did all that man could do. They cut themselves, danced, jumped, flipped. If they started earlier, from sunrise, from 6 a.m. to 3, then they had it their way for nine hours, and nine is the number of judgment. Sooner or later, God's going to judge. Oh, yes, he will. Don't worry about the judgment. Just one, worry about what side of the judgment you are. Now it was God's turn. Elijah knew what time it was. He knew that the Lord God of Israel had given Israel an appointed time to meet with him. Although he's always accessible to us, there are certain times that he's appointed, amen, and appointed for the visitation, like this hour that we're in right now. This is an appointed time for you. You should always be trying to make it this time because God has promised to meet with us at this appointed time. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care what they say, amen. You can always redeem the time when you meet with God on the appointed time.
Another way of saying appointed time is to say the time of your appointment. In other words, amen, if I tell you I've got an appointment, amen, amen, if I tell you I've got an appointment with somebody, that means that me and that person have agreed to meet at an appointed time, a set place. And God has appointed a time for you and us, you and I, to meet with him. Elijah knew that all the devout people, the devout people, those who loved Jehovah would be in the temple. He knew, amen, that they'd be praying to God. He said, I might look like I'm by myself, but I got a whole lot of people you can't see. Mm. He knew that God will never miss his appointments. He knew that God had made a promise to King Solomon. Oh, we got a promise from God. Amen. And God can't lie and he won't quit. God had made Solomon a promise. He said, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. I don't think you're with me. Amen. He says, whenever you pray, come and look and pray. Amen. To this, to the place where I am. God didn't say he was going to be everywhere. He said, I'm going to be in this temple. I don't think you're with me. That's why this temple is facing east. Be oh, no, I, I don't want to go out there like that. No. And so, he says, when I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. In other words, God says, there's many ways that I can get your attention. When I, you, you're after oil, you're in love with oil, I'm going to let the oil run. He says, but you know, he says that if things can get bad, he said, all these things that happen. But then God, amen, tells him, he says, but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive them their sins. And where I will heal the gulf. Oh, no, you're not with me. I, I, I make the oil go out to sea. I, I blow it out into the deep blue sea. I can send a reverse tsunami and blow it out and dissipate it in the ocean. I'm not helpless. He said, I will heal their land. I've chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be always be there. First Chronicles chapter 7. And so there's a God that you can pray to that promises to hear. If you know who you're praying to. At the time of the evening sacrifice, he lifted his voice in prayer to the God of the covenant. How many got a covenant with a living God? Oh, I don't care what they say. I got a covenant. I got a covenant partner. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. You can't see him, but you'll feel him. He's right there. Uh, it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His, his request was that God would be glorified. Uh, God, I want you to glorify yourself in this gulf situation. God, I want you to move in this situation. When all hopelessness is broken through, when man cannot do it and they admit they can't do it. God, glorify yourself. Do it in a way that God shows that you're almighty God. Blow it out to see God. Dissipate it. Or they'll try to say, oh, it was a wind pattern that came down from Canada. But we'll know that that's a wind that's been blown by the God Jehovah. And so, he said, God be glorified as the God of Israel, the true and only living God. And that he would make it known that Elijah was his servant. Notice that Elijah said, God, don't make, don't, I don't even want to be known as a preacher or a prophet. He said, just let him know that I serve you. Just let them know that I'm doing all these things because I am your servant and you're my master. Oh, don't, I don't want them to know that I'm a prophet. Oh, don't tell anybody I'm a great preacher and a teacher. He said, all I want to be known is let them know that I'm your servant. Jesus said, the greatest in the kingdom is a servant of all. But even more, by sending fire from heaven, the Lord, Lord, let them know, amen, that you are going to forgive them. And that you could turn their hearts back to the worship of the true God. And the Bible said, suddenly, ugh. the Bible said, suddenly, if things didn't have to turn and become good for God to do it, God can do good in the midst of evil. Fire fell from heaven 
and totally devoured the sacrifice. The altar and the water, the trench around, amen, the twice, the water, amen. God left nothing. It all disappeared in an instant. And nobody could say nothing. God shut everybody's mouth. The fire, God's judgment consumed the stones. The wood that was the wood that was on the stones, the sacrifice that was on the wood that was on the stones, amen, it completely evaporated the three times poured waters in the trenches and had been poured. God's fire came with such an intensity. Somebody say the judgment of God. Hallelujah. The altar of Baal was still there standing as a monument to a lost cause. And over against it was the scorched, smoldering earth where Jehovah's altar had been, now completely consumed by God. God judged between Elijah and the false prophets of Baal, and the false prophets of Baal were stunned. I believe God's getting ready to do something that's going to stun the world. I believe God's getting ready to do something going to shut their mouths. I believe God's getting ready to do something they will be amazed, astonished, and astounded. Take a step back and shut up. Uh, they'll be trying to figure out ways to say, well, maybe it was, the, uh, it could have been, but uh, 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 mm. God, show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. That's who I'm depending on. Who you depending on? Hallelujah. And in this way, it's going to be when God begins to answer the prayer of his people. The naysayers and the unbelievers will be in total shock. They will see it and still not believe it. They will see it and refuse to admit it. They'll see it and refuse to submit to it. Don't think because God will do a great miracle that the unbeliever will come to it. And in closing, Matthew 27. Oh, there's going to be a showdown between God and the bells of the world. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Matthew 27, 45 and 46. I got to hurry. When you, when you get it, say amen. amen. If you didn't get it too late. Uh, from <laughs> Look at your neighbor who got it. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over the land. You know the story. Jesus is on the cross now. They've whipped him, scourged him, smashed the crown of thorns on his head. They've lacerated his back. He's hanging there now. And now, the Bible said from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, amen. Did you see that six and nine again? Ah, oh, the man was doing all that he could do to God. Uh, how many know that when man does his worst, God does his best? And it said the ninth hour. How many know that's the hour of judgment? Come on, somebody. Talk to me. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out. Notice that he didn't cry out, amen, on the sixth hour, amen, or the fifth hour, or the seventh hour, but he cried out on the ninth hour. Eli, Eli, lama shabakna, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And here I want you to see, amen, Isaiah put it this way. Isaiah 53, 4, that says this this way. He bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. That by the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we were, we are healed. That he that has redeemed us, amen, from the curse of the law was being made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. He was made a sin offering, 2 Corinthians 5.21. And in the darkness, God the Father poured out his judgments against sin. The Bible lets us know that although he was crucified through weakness, he exercised wonderful power when he died. He had power over death. Amen. Death was there, but Jesus said, not yet. Mm -hmm. He could have died, amen, in Herod's place, but not yet. He could have died in front of Pilate, but not yet. He could have died when the, when, the, when, the, uh, when the Romans beat him and scourged him, but he said, not yet. It's not time. Amen. He died, 
Amen. But in his dying, three miracles took place simultaneously. The dead veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Uh, the earthquake opened the graves of many saints and dead people rose from the grave. Mm. The Bible said that Jesus shouted, it's finished. And Father, into your hands I command my spirit. I'll commit my spirit. No man taketh my life, but I lay my life down. And if I have the power to lay it down, I want you to know I have the power to pick it up again. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fact that he shouted with a loud voice indicates that he was in complete control of his faculties when he yielded up his spirit and died. And I would submit to you that in the story of Elijah, where God poured out his judgments, touch your neighbor and say, now listen up now. Look at somebody else and say, you should have slept last night. I submit to you in the story of Elijah where God poured out his judgment on the sacrifice, the judgment, the judgment, the fire consumed the sacrifice to such an extent that there was nothing left. Am I right about it? However, in this text, the Bible shows that God the Father pours out his judgment on the Son, Jesus Christ, who is the living sacrifice to such an extent, amen, that the world went into total darkness, amen, for three hours. However, in this situation, unlike the story in 1 Kings, are you listening to me, where the judgment consumed the sacrifice on Calvary's hill, on Golgotha's height, I came to tell you that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice consumed the judgment. Oh, oh, I don't think you're with me. Everything that God had against sin, he poured out on Jesus. And Jesus took it all. The heart of Jesus. Jesus said, pour it out, Father. Pour it out, everything. Don't leave nothing undone. And God poured it out to the extent that the world shut down its light. The sun stopped shining for a moment in time. But Jesus consumed the judgment. Oh, I don't think you're with me. Oh, I don't think you're with me. The judgment in Kings consumed the sacrifice. But here the sacrifice consumed the judgment. What a God. Look at your neighbor and say, what a God. And in the same way that there was nothing left on the altar of the sacrifice when the fire came down, the Bible lets us know. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you now. The same way that the fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, the sacrifice, consumed the judgment. The Bible says, now, therefore, there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what judgment comes. I don't think you're with me. I don't care what kind of plague comes. I don't care what the situation happens. I don't care what the naysayers and they're getting scared. But you should know there's no condemnation. There's no judgment that can come on my life now because I was in Christ Jesus. When he took all that the Father had for me, he took it all. There's nothing left that can come against me. Oh, if you believe that you'd praise him. If you understood what I was saying. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the Dow Jones does. I don't care what the GPA says. I know that there is now, there is now and forevermore no judgment of God that can come against my life because Jesus paid the price. He took it all. Hallelujah. 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 The sacrifice consumed the judgment. And now hear the words of your Lord, Christ Jesus, our Savior, as he hung there and took it all. He said, now, Father, that I've taken it all. But what do you want me to do, son? Do you want me to punish them? No, my Father. Father, forgive them. Some of you just can't seem to get it through your head. He said, Father, forgive them. I take it that Jesus has taken it all. You can forgive yourself because God already has. You don't have to
have to keep beating up yourself because God is already forgiving you. You don't have to talk bad about yourself because Jesus took it all. He took everything. You say, but I still make mistakes. He took it all. But I still sin, but he took it all. Oh, that's why he's a great savior. That's why you should magnify him. And my question to you is so. Look at your neighbor and say so. No matter what happens in this world, if I've been forgiven, how can I now be condemned? Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together and magnify. Go ahead and thank him, Lord. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but I know I'm forgiven. I don't know what next week may happen, but I know I've been forgiven. I don't, can't control my job or the situations around me, but I know that I'm living in Christ Jesus. Oh, trouble may come to my left. Oh, enemies may rise up on my right. Situations that I can't control may assail me, but I know that I know that I know that my God has risen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to put my trust in Jesus. I'm going to focus my sights on Jesus. I'm going to believe that Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, magnify him a little bit right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am. I have been. I will always be forgiven. Hallelujah. So when the Bible talks about judgment, he's not talking about you. Hallelujah. 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 We need to stand in the freedom that we have. I'm free. Hallelujah. Today, because I know that my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name today. He took it all. I preached to you last week that he drank the cup. Preach it all. That Jesus said, my father, if there's any way that this cup can pass from me. He said, but not my will, thy will. He took your cup. So it doesn't matter how you look at it. He's trying to get, I took it for you. I've done it all for you. I drank your cup so you can drink my cup. And my cup is sweet. Oh, come on here, somebody. My cup is life-giving. That's at the heart of communion. And every time we do that, we're reminding him, I remember. I remember. You can make it through anything. Why? Because he's made a way. Come on, he's made a way. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm out of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a sermon of contrast. Don't become terrified or frightened. Amen. Because God, amen, has you. He got you. Look at your neighbors. He got you. He got you. He got you. He has you. In the power of his hand. Come on now. He said, my father has placed you in my hand. He said, nobody. It, it, it's a double indemnity, Pastor David. He said, now nah, my father has placed you in my hand and I've closed my hand and the father has put his hands over my nobody can take you no, they, that doesn't mean they won't try but nobody can take you out of my hand he's made us undeniable promises I will never leave you or forsake you Hallelujah. I go to prepare a place for you. 
that where I am, you may be there also. Oh, hallelujah. This is forever. How long, Jesus? This is forever and forever and forever and forever. You shall be with me. Hallelujah. I know I ain't got you convinced. Uh, I'm going to marry you. Just so you understand. I'm mar but no, not married to me. But I'm going to adopt you. I'm going to give you my name. I'm going to make you part of my family. Hallelujah. Nothing in this world is going to overcome you. Let's bow our heads. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you the greatest invitation that was ever given for the greatest promise that anyone ever needed. That Jesus came and gave his life as a ransom for all. He died to save you, that you may have a way out. He's a way maker. He's here today, and his love and his mercy are so real. And he makes that invitation to you. He says, I have already paid the price. Will you accept my great gift? No matter how great the gift is, no matter how wonderful the gift giver, if you don't receive the gift, it really doesn't matter. And today, the Lord Jesus Christ is extending to you the gift of salvation. I love you more than you can ever know. And I died to save you. And I offer you the gift of salvation today. If you're here today under the sound of my voice, you say, Bishop, that's me. I need the Lord in my life. I need him. You're speaking to me today. I want you just to slip your hand right up. Just slip it right up for me today. God bless you, sir. I see that hand. Praise God. God bless you. If you know him already, I'm not talking. I'm talking to you if you've never made this commitment. I see that hand, sir. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Altar counselors, are you here? There's some people with their hands raised. I want you to go to them. Just keep your hand raised. They're in the back of the church. There's a gentleman. I need a man. Thank you, Will. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's a young lady. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. If you've done it and you've given him your life once, you don't have to do it again. Hallelujah. His blood is still good. His blood is still good. The efficacy of his blood is still good. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Nobody like Jesus. Church, I'm preaching my heart out to you because I'm trying to get your attention. Don't get distracted right about here. Stay steady. Get in his presence. Let him fill you with his glory. That your faith will be so strong. Hallelujah. You got to rest in the assurance of your salvation. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. And then you got to know, Josh, again that you know. Stand on your feet and give the Lord a praise as Pastor Lillian comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord a shout out. He's a good God. Thank you, Lord, because we're free today and every day. Jesus said, he whom the Son set free is free indeed. And we have been set free. Come on, lift your hands to a holy God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you set us free, so we are free indeed. Lord, we're free today, tomorrow, and forever. We thank you for the blood that still has power to keep us standing on the rock of our salvation. Thank you because you are good 
and your mercy is everlasting. Thank you for this day, my God. We thank you for our bishop, for the word, for everything you've done, are doing, and will do in Jesus' name. Lord, dismiss us from this place. Lord, with the love of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the sweet fellowship of God the Holy Spirit now and forevermore, and the people of God say, Amen. Come on, the people of God say, Amen. Greet somebody. We love you. Have a good day. We love you. God bless you. Greet somebody before you leave. God bless. for staying tuned in today. Did you enjoy today's message? I pray that you did. And I also pray that your relationship with God is growing by leaps and bounds day by day. Now there's so much more to come, so I want you to be sure to like, follow, and share us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Just type in Love Gospel Assembly and I'm sure you will be blessed by what you hear and see. And in the meantime, be sure to ring that subscribe bell. You won't want to miss all that's coming up. So have a blessed day.